All right, so in my handout that we that we were looking at, the Webmaster Tools handout, I'm going to back up to the first page. I mentioned here Google Webmaster Tools and Bing Webmaster Tools. As I said on day one, in this class we are going to set ourselves up to optimize for both of the big search engines, Google and Bing. So Google has about 60% market share or more, and Bing has about 20% market share or so, and as I said, Bing is increasing because Bing is being found by default more and more on some devices. Apple made the deal with Microsoft to show the Bing search engine, to use the Bing search engine on their iPhones going forward. It used to be that Google was the main search engine on the iPhones. Now it's Bing. People can, of course, change to whichever search engine they want, but how many of you know how to change your search engine on your device? Not that many people. So a lot of people are going to stick with what works. And so if you buy a brand new Windows computer, that's going to have Bing search built in. That's why more people are using Bing. Maybe you've never heard of it. Maybe you're never going to use it. Maybe you're happy with Google. Fine. But other millions of people are going to use Bing. And so it, uh, it behooves us to know how to use both of them. What we're going to do then is we're going to do Bing first and then we'll back up to Google. Once we do one, it'll be pretty easy to do the other. So here what I've got is a link, Webmaster Guidelines. This is something for you to, this link is something for you to look at and read on your own, maybe print it out and read it by the fireplace on a nice cold night. Uh, this is pages and pages of, of information from, from Bing about what is recommended and what is not recommended. Uh, so we'll touch on it, but this is part of your work to educate yourself. Uh, but whatever, many things that we find here about what to do on Bing will also apply on Google and vice versa. And then there'll be unique things per, so be, per search engine. Um, what we're going to do together in a moment is we're going to add and verify a site. We're going to claim our site in the search engine, basically. We're going to tell the search engine, this is my site. Therefore, give me all the data you know about my site. And it'll be a lot of data. How many hits you've, you've gotten, how long someone stayed on your site, what web browser they used, what country they were from, what language their, their browser is set to. And why would we want all of that data? Well, knowledge is power because once we know who's visiting our site, that helps us answer the questions about who's our target audience, who are our demographics, who would care about our site, and then we can use other um, techniques to then fully target our message to those people to get more of those of that audience. We'll talk about setting up a site map. This is very important because how many of you if you go to a brand new town or a brand new mall in a town, how many of you wander the mall until you find the store you're looking for as opposed to going to the store directory, seeing the right store, and walking to it? So how many of you wander around to find the store? Not too many. How many of you go to the directory, find the map, go to the store? More people. That's what a site map is for our website. It's a list of every page on our site a special file actually, that then the search engines look at to understand this is all the content on their site. So when someone searches for, um, you know, fair trade chocolate cookie recipes, I happen to have a page on that on my site, and the search engine knows it because it's in my sitemap. We're going to talk about a sitemap and submitting a sitemap to the search engines, which helps you the thing that I have to say though, this is not just a simple basic file that you can write yourself. It's not going to be something that you write in Word with a list of all your pages. It's a very technical file <coughs> that most people cannot write. And I myself that have had lots of experience, more than a decade of experience in this stuff, I'm not going to waste my time writing my own sitemap. It's hard. It's hard for me. We have plugins and most likely your site has a feature that you just turn it on. Once we turn it on, we submit it to the search engines and then that'll help us for the search engines to find your site and better yet for people to find the content on your site. We will see that Bing has something about linking additional sites which is basically telling Bing 
Well, I've got my website, but I've also got Google Plus, I've also got Twitter, I've also got Instagram, I've also got this and that. You're going to connect your other sites, your other channels, other avenues to Bing so that it also knows you, you get traffic from those or want to get traffic from those venues. And the direct link to what we're going to look at is right here at the bottom, bing.com slash toolbox. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to set this up. How many of you currently have a Hotmail email account? How many of you have an Outlook email account? Um, what's the other one? Live.com. Anyone have a live email account? Basically a Microsoft email account. Anyone have a Microsoft email account? If you do, then we'll be able to create this account very easily because you've already got that login info. If you don't, no problem. We'll still be able to use your Gmail account or your Cox at Home account or whatever. We'll be able to create a webmaster, a Bing Webmaster Tool account any way that you that you want, with your existing Microsoft account, with your existing Gmail account, or to make a brand new one. Any way will work. So go ahead and open your web browser if it's not open, and let's go to Bing dot com slash toolbox bing.com slash toolbox that's right there in my handout for your reference So on the right side, under support, we've got webmaster guidelines, webmaster help and how-to, the blog, and email support. So that's stuff that you should be looking at. We won't have time to do it together, but you should look at those resources to get more knowledge. And we've got other items here. So the way this will work is if you've got a Microsoft account, you're going to click sign in and sign in with your, with your Hotmail or Outlook, whatever, with your password, you're going to sign in. If you don't have a Microsoft account, um, click sign in anyway, and then you'll have the option. Um, where is it at? Uh, create right here. Don't have an account? Sign up now. So if you don't have an account, we can create one, and you can keep your Gmail account or whatever. So if you have a Microsoft account, go ahead and log in. I'm going to look at briefly the screen about creating an account. I already have one. I'm not going to go through the process. It's pretty straightforward. But I'm going to click on Sign Up Now. It'll ask you for a bunch of information. You should fill this in legitimately because this is going to give you a lot of data about your website, which, which you want. You can use your existing email victor at gmail.com, that's fine. Or you can create a brand new account, victor at outlook.com or hotmail. There's no wrong answer. The point is we need to either sign in or create an account. Yes, it will ask other things. You can skip some. I'm not sure which ones you can skip, but it'll tell you once you click create. It asks for an alternate email just in case you're locked out of the account for some reason to retrieve it. It asks for a phone number. You think that's pretty intrusive. Well, this is the nature of security nowadays. Passwords don't work. You might have a password that you use that you think is very secure, but do you have, how many of you raise your hand, how many of you use the same password for all your accounts? That is the same password for your email and your bank and your mortgage lender, and your social media, and this and that. If you're using the same password on multiple networks, that's not very secure. Because if someone figures out the password on your Facebook, they now have the password, perhaps, for your bank. So better security is to have different passwords for different services. Well, the new generation of security is, okay, we're going to have passwords and such, but for extra security, please provide a phone number. 
because someone might have figured out your password, but that someone also most likely does not have your phone. So if you still have your phone, you should be able to get back into your account and prevent bad guys from getting into your account. So if you're creating a new account, take a moment to do that. I already have an account, so I'm going to just log in. So go ahead and log in. If you haven't managed to log in just yet, don't worry, you, you, won't, you won't miss much. But you want to log in or create the account. We're going to have a screen that looks hopefully something like this. If it doesn't look exactly, don't worry. But this screen will show us our website, or as many websites as we want to track. Actually, as many websites as we have the authority to track. Because think about this, what's to stop your competitor from setting this up on your site and seeing your traffic? What's to stop them is that we are going to verify that we are the owner of the site through a few means that I will show you. So we can't set this up for our competitor. We can't see what their traffic is through this tool. That's good because then our competitor can't do the same to us. But on this screen it'll show us a bunch of data Mine's empty because I just set this up. Yours is probably empty too. Question. I'll help you just one moment. Uh, if you did get to this screen here, what we want to do is hopefully you see something that says enter URL, enter address. So you're going to type in the address of your website. click Add. So what we're going to be doing together is go through these screens where we set up these webmaster tools. Now the one step is that we need an address. And I'll explain as we go on. I believe in a moment I would just wait a little bit and do it because we're all trying to access it at the same time. Thank you. 
Yes. Uh, we can add multiple websites here, and uh, I'll be showing you how to do that in just a moment. So I'm at this screen here, and we'll proceed in just a moment. Mm -hmm. What this is saying is, we should word it more like, would you like to use a different one? So what it's done here is it's sent us, it's sent an email to this email kind of one. So if you can open the other email, there's going to be a link that is, please click here to verify. Okay. All right, so on this screen, um, I put in my address and then it says, okay, now add your sitemap. We will not be able to do this just yet, most likely, because again, most people probably never heard of a sitemap until this class. So I'm not going to fill in a sitemap yet. I don't know what it is yet. And then it says, when do you receive the most traffic to your site? Well, I don't know that either, so I'll leave that on default. The point of this is that Bing and Google are going to be checking on your site periodically. If you get a lot of traffic on a certain time of day, we can tell Bing and Google, don't check my site at these hours, so that it do doesn't use up my resources. I don't believe that the, um, that the that these webmaster tools really impact your website speed very much, but if you do want them to say, don't visit my site during peak business hours, we can say that. I don't know if that's the case, so I'll leave it as default. So I'll just click Add. Some of you got a screen different than mine that asks you for a lot of extra detail. I can't quite show it to you, unfortunately, but it's probably going to ask a lot of detail about uh, the number of people that work in your company and other things like that. So do fill that in as best as possible. Uh, there's no wrong answer here, really, but you want to fill that in. And again, I can't show it to you because I've already set up this account. If you need help with that, call me over. But once you get past that screen, you will see a screen that looks like this with three options. Option one, place an XML file on your web server. Option two, copy and paste a meta tag to your default web page. And option three, add CNAME records to your DNS. Now, we need, this is what prevents our competitor from seeing our statistics. Our competitor does not have access to our web server login information or to edit our home page, or to log into our provider, like, like Bluehost. So this is how we can prevent a competitor from seeing our data. Now what we need to do is choose one of these three methods, and then uh, this will verify that we are the right owners of that site that I'm claiming to be. Um, depending on the login that you got, Remember I said come with your login info? You'll either do number one or number two. I would not do number three. I've tried to do it several times throughout the years, and it always seems pretty complicated, even for me. So I don't recommend option three. Option two oftentimes might be the best way to go, because if you're able to log into your WordPress or Weebly or something, there's probably going to be somewhere in the control panel there that's, that says something like edit meta tags, perhaps. And so what this is saying is you're going to copy this line of code here, this gray line of code, and you're going to copy and paste it to your home page's meta tag. Uh, if you don't know what that means, don't worry just yet. But this method is saying copy that code, paste it into your site, click verify, you're done. The other method is log into your server and upload this file. It's saying download this file, log into GoDaddy, upload this file, and then at the bottom click Verify, and then you're verified. Again, all three of these techniques are not very complicated, but if you've never done this before, it seems super complicated. I build in some time at this point in the lecture to take a moment for you to raise your hand, and I'll come and help you individually, because if you're able to do this and know what this means, do it. If you don't, raise your hand, and I'll come and help you out, and we'll take maybe five minutes or so, and we'll go on. Seems like uh, we've had a few people. Okay, so let's just take a moment, help a few people, and then we'll go on. It's more of a question, though. Uh, the, uh, does your ISP have these tools? Like, yeah, ISP. Like, web map, like, 
GoDaddy because they have these tools. If I went in there to my manage my account, I'd have you mean these tools like the webmaster tools? Yes. Not really. The ISP doesn't have webmaster tools, although the web the ISP will, will give you the ability to set up these tools. Well, let's say if I wanted to see how uh, many hits my site got, those kind of things, would they be able to tell me if you're right with that? Yeah, but very, very basic. So these ones are going to be way better. A quick reminder if you haven't done so yet, please mute your devices. So then right here, I have this information and I'll click next. On that one, actually, I guess I can just say not just. Just make a note that this is where a lot of these forms of email is very interesting. Um, 
your domain name from which okay. did you only buy domain name or did you also buy host name? Okay, at this point then we might not be able to go that much further because this this code the thing is gonna give us should be attached to a full website. It's the home page. But you will be able to at least form a step in and you'll be ready once you get that Should I plan this out now? Yeah. Yeah, except for the site, you don't have to fill out the rest as best as you can. You can save it, and then uh, once you get the domain hosting, then you can do the next card. We're going to go back to it because of the info here. I think we've lost that full box. Yes. What kind of a 
Anyone else? I think I'm ready to go. a spot to plug that code in there, mm -hmm. it's not there. The other way to do it is to add a plugin. You can see that you have no ability to add plugins. So most likely your user account has some limitations. So that so that you should know, so that you don't accidentally break it. So whatever works on your site, what you can do is tell them um, you know you can copy this whole section here and tell them can you do this one and they can do it. Or maybe better yet ask person to give you more access to your account so that you can do some of this advanced stuff. They okay. most likely didn't give it to you because they're too afraid you don't need to break the site, which is understandable. But what we'll talk about in here shouldn't really affect okay. your site.
everyone. If you didn't quite get a chance for me to come help you personally, we'll have lab time soon. I want to move on at this point. So if I did come to help you, hopefully you saw it wasn't super complicated, because then you'll need to do the same thing for Google. You'll need to grab a little piece of code that Google is going to give you and do the same thing that we did. So hopefully it stuck, or you wrote it down, but you'll be doing something very similar for Google. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to log back in just to show you. I'm going to show you an account that has been set up properly. All right, so if you fully, if you manage to set this up, you might get a screen that looks that looks um, something like this, but yours is empty. I'm going to briefly mention some aspects of this and then in more detail next time, because if you've just set this up, you don't have any data yet. This is going to start collecting data from this point forward. So it's not going to give you what happened a month ago if you didn't set it up a month ago. That's why you want to set this up early in your in your process. And again, you might not really see too much at this point. I'll mention this briefly, and then next time we'll go into much more detail about what all these screens are, as well as Google Analytics when we get to it very soon. So uh, we're going to see some data, clicks from search, and appeared in search. So in this particular client, in this particular time period, which is 30 days, this shows that this client's websites appeared in search 16% less. Uh, so it showed up less time when someone searched in Bing. Okay, that's one value. But then clicks from search. Just because someone sees your result on the page of resu results doesn't mean they will actually click on it. So that's the clicks from search or the click-through rate, CTR. That's something you might hear, CTR, click-through rate. What is the rate that people are actually clicking through to go to your site? In the same time period of 30 days, 19% less. So people have seen this client on search 16% less and have clicked on it nearly 20% less. Why is that? Well, I've got that 30 days, but you can look at it what happened in the last three months and what happened in the last six months. And depending on, on your amount of time that you've got this set up, you may be able to see more data. I would be worried if simply in the last short amount of time there were, there were negative numbers. But in, in the longer length of time, hopefully then I'm seeing the positive numbers. So the whole point of these webmaster tools are to see these trends. What's working, what's not working. Did that tweet accomplish anything? Is it working that I'm paying this company to get higher on results or not? Is it working that I'm learning this and applying it? So these values will make more sense as you collect data, and these values will, be, will have different meaning to different people. Not, you don't always have to be striving for the positive numbers. Sometimes it just doesn't happen for a variety of reasons. But if in the long term of six months you have negative numbers, okay, that's a cause for concern. In half a year, you haven't gotten very good results. In one month, maybe we've got negative numbers, but maybe in six months we've got positive numbers. So it's the more of this data that we know, the better. Pages crawled and crawl errors. The, uh, the search engines are going to go through your site and analyze every screen of your site. And so less screens were analyzed just because there might not have been more content added to the site as opposed to previous. And then errors. Well, there were less errors on the site. That's good. And the errors could be like a broken link or a missing picture and such. 
pages index, nothing has changed, meaning that the number of pages themselves added to the, pay, to the site hasn't really changed. There was a brand new blog post added, that's why there's that number difference, but percentage-wise it's minuscule. I do have a sitemap set up here, and so this is the 139 pages on the site. Uh, I'll get to sitemaps again a little later. S search keywords. Now Bing is telling me these are the keywords that people are typing to find the site. In this particular case, something called Huitla Coche, Magueri, Tacolandia 2015. How many times it appeared in a search result in the number of uh, in this 30 days, and how many were actually clicked? We have something called inbound links, which are also called backlinks. Again, I'll talk about that in detail. But backlinks are something that is very important. Inbound links, very important for SEO. Uh, modern SEO. Um, Part of it relies on the authority of your site, meaning anyone can make a website, anyone can make a hundred websites, but why, why, would, why would it be important and why would people care about it? It's the content. So if I've got good content on my site and I have links to my site from other people's websites or social media, that tells the search engines this site is good. It's not just another fly-by-night organization. Um, it actually has meaningful links pointing to the site, so we'll rank it higher than a similar site. So the home page here, as of these 30 days, has 672 links. So these other websites, these other blogs, these other social media sites are linking to the home page. 50 links pointing to this blog post, The Amazing McGay Plant. 29 links pointing directly to the menu. So the search engines are seeing this, links to this site, therefore let's rank them higher. And again, popularity breeds popularity. So if I get links from other people's websites to my websites, that helps me. In the old days, a technique was I would create victorsbakery.com and victorsbakery.net and .org and maybe even amazingvictorsbakery.com and link them all together. And the search engines would say, that's great, links. But nowadays it says, that's bad, spam links. Because if I can create 40 websites and link them all together, that's meaningless to the search engines. Well, not really meaningless, detrimental to you. The search engines will see that and see that all of your sites that you own are linking together. What it will instead care about, the search engine, is what other websites that you don't control link to you. Does the local newspaper link to you? Do you have a review from someone's personal blog? Is there a tweet from a celebrity that, that tweeted about your amazing cupcakes? So other people's links to your websites are much more meaningful than your own links to your own website. We'll talk about how to get those links, of course, but this is one of the most important factors here. And you would have never known that you had links, perhaps, unless you had these webmaster tools set up. Question. Yeah. Um, appeared in search. You don't know from this uh, particular data whether you're number one or number fifteen thousand. Another screen will tell us. Actually, it'll tell us this particular keyword appeared uh, most consistently in number seven. It'll tell us on another screen here. Yeah, if you follow through, appeared in search. So, for example, this particular keyword is for this client there, aqui es texcoco. Someone misspelled aqui es excoco. They forgot the T. So that appeared number one on search results and with one click. So 100% click rate, but no one else because no one else was misspelling it. can see here there were some clicks from people searching Texcoco Barbacoa 
or the brand new opened location in Commerce, California, which is south of, uh, just outside of Los Angeles. So this will tell us all of that data. What position did it appear in? Is this the same restaurant you have over there? Yes. So it'll give us all of this data, but we won't know about it until it's set up. So I'm not going to go too much into detail just yet. We're going to look at Google in a moment. But that's the point of setting up Bing Webmaster Tools. This will allow us to um, to track this data. And so very briefly, here's some clients. And you know, there's some negative numbers here and there for most of them, it seems. And there's a variety of factors of why. I'll explain that as we have this set up and we're able to look at it together. But if I put it in more amount of time, well, that particular client in the past three months have gotten more clicks. The past three months, not so many clicks. Uh, same thing here, down there, up there, same, down, up, infinite. Um, so this is why we're setting up these webmaster tools to track this data. And this was in Bing. We're going to do the same sort of thing in a moment with Google Analytics. Um, any questions so far? Bing Webmaster Tools came out after Google, Google's tools, so Bing Webmaster Tools are all in one location. Google's is in two, Google Webmaster Tools and Google Analytics. Maybe one day they'll link them together as one, but right now we've got two links. Google.com slash webmasters and Google.com slash analytics. Google.com Webmasters is very, very, very similar to, to the way we did it in Bing. So I'll, I'll look at it second. I'll look instead first Google Analytics. You say, well, what's the point? Why are there two of these things to deal with? I ask myself the same thing. Hopefully they'll blend it together eventually. The big idea with Webmasters, Google Webmaster Tools, which now they've actually changed, I believe, to be called Google Search Console. So I need to update this. Google Webmaster slash Google Search Console. The big purpose of that that I'm seeing is that this will show you at a glance broken links, is the server running, is there malware on the site? So those sorts of things. Google Analytics is the one that will overwhelm you with data about how much traffic you got at what time of day with what person's web browser, how long did they stay on your site, what was your bounce rate, and all of this complex stuff. So maybe they have that reason for keeping them separate. Maybe you just need to check server health, go to Webmaster Tools. Maybe you need to see the full details, go to Analytics. But you have to remember it's in two separate screens. And if you're only hanging out in Analytics all day long and never checking Webmaster Tools, you won't know that you've got a virus on your site. So we'll set up Webmaster Tools in a moment because it's very similar to what we did in Bing. We'll set, we'll set up Analytics first and then um, proceed. The more data, the more better. Okay. So, um, so slightly different data then? Very different data. Google okay. Analytics is super detailed. Okay. Uh, WordPress statistics will give you the this, the data about your search terms and traffic and so forth, but it's not going to tell you about your user's location and web browser and the time of day that they visited, like really deep data that comes from analytics. So I'm going to go then uh, on the web browser. Let's go to google.com slash analytics. Another term for statistics working with the data. So go to analytics, google.com slash analytics. How many of you currently have a Gmail account? Most people. Same sort of thing with, with Bing a moment ago. At the very top right corner, click sign in if you've got a Gmail account, or you can create one. Now, people sometimes ask, should I use my personal Gmail or my business email? Either or will work, but you might want to use your business one. Keep all your business information together. Keep your statistics, your analytics and such of your business saved to your Gmail business account. But it's very easy. What's that? You change it later. 
you can change it. It's very easy to change that. It's very easy to give more people access. So I can create a Bing account, a Google a Analytics account, and then add other people to manage it. Add the boss, add the other people in my company. We can all access it with our own logins. We can remove people. Let's say we, we quit or our contract ended. Well, we can remove ourselves from this stuff from that client that we left. So either sign in with your Gmail, or if you don't have one, take a moment to create it. I will sign in. Okay, again, mine looks different because mine's already set up, but as soon as you log in, probably it'll, it'll ask you right away. Uh, well, let me look over someone's shoulder. What does yours look like if you just set this up? Okay. Just a second. Let's see. Yeah, so if you just set it up, it'll ask you for a new account, and then uh, show that screen in just a moment. Everyone's mind look a little bit different, that's okay. Yours, do you want to click on the right side? Yep. Right, so if you I'm going to show you, okay. I guess that's okay. So hopefully everyone gets some sort of screen about registering it. Oops, I'll show you that in a moment. So again, if you need some help individually, I'll help you on the quick sign up right there. Um, so your screen looks different than mine. I'll show this to you in a moment, but you probably see something that looks like looks like this. New account. Okay, so this is the confusing thing about Google Analytics. One of the many confusing things. Notice when I'm on the home screen here, I have these little folders. And in a particular folder, I can have a bunch of data. For example, vmcinc.net. On this particular website, I've got um, data from the YouTube channel as well as the main website for that particular client. For this client, vmcampus.com, I have the data from their DeviantArt website, from the main website, from the blog, and from YouTube. So what it's asking you right now is to create an account, which is the folder where you can then save multiple data channels. So even though you have an account and it's asking you to create an account, don't think of it in terms of a brand new Gmail account or whatever. Think of it really as in the terms of a folder to organize your different properties, your different websites or YouTube or wherever else you're getting data from. So like this one over here. Swap dots company, that's the account, and then we've only got the the website that we're tracking. This one over here, their website. This one over here, it's their YouTube. So that screen that you're seeing, new account, you're most likely tracking a website, so that's fine. Um, account name. Accounts are the topmost level of organization and contain one or more tracking IDs. So the account name is the folder. I would just put the name of your website. Victor's Lake Bakery. That's the name of the folder. And the property 
is what is the website so here I would say for example main website and put in the address to the website if this were the YouTube channel then I would put YouTube and put in the YouTube address youtube.com slash Victor for Facebook I do not believe you are able to do it Facebook themselves will give you a lot of amazing data them, themselves all of this demographic data and they're competitors so they, they don't quite mesh you would do this for your website and this would work for a Dreamweaver site, a WordPress site, a Weebly site, a Wix site, etc., etc. You would do this for YouTube, because they allow that. You would do this for some websites, not all of them. And if you don't know which ones, you could just try plugging it in, and it'll tell you if it works or not. This is my main site. Industry category. There's no wrong answer here, but it'll just, there's going to be a lot of data. So if you select one of these options here, it might present you the data in the easiest way. Bakery, which is food. Do we have food? Right there. Food and drink. If I sell my artwork, let's see, do we have artwork anywhere? Arts and entertainment, yep. Check your time zone is correct, that way you get email at the right time. Then we've got data sharing. In short, I would recommend turn these all off, even though they recommend keep them on. What this is saying is you're allowing, you're allowing the data that is collected on Webmaster Tools to be shared with these other services, such as Google Products and Services, Benchmarking, Technical Support, Account Specialist. Maybe keep it on Technical Support if you contact with them. but you will approve it anyway when you do contact with them. So if you want a little more privacy, it might be good to turn these all off, and you can turn them on when you need it as necessary. So you fill that stuff in, and then you select Get Tracking ID. Then here's the Terms of Service, the thing that everyone agrees to but no one reads. You could if you want to. Click Accept. If you don't accept it, you don't see any of this data. What this then takes you to is again one of the many screens. I'll, I'll explain a few in a moment. But here then, the way this will work, similar to what we did with Bing, it's going to give us, there's only one way to do it. It gives us this chunk of code. And we have to add this chunk of code to every page we want to track. If this was a classic Dreamweaver site, I would copy this chunk of code and paste it into all of my pages. The home page, the about page, the contact page, manually. But many of us are using a more modern system like WordPress or um, Weebly or Wix and so forth, and all of those have a way for you basically to edit your template and then this applies to then all your pages. Because a modern software like WordPress is based on templates. You edit the template and then those features apply to every page. So I'm going to show you, because a lot of us seem to have WordPress, I'm going to show you how to do this in WordPress and then of course we'll have time individually. But I need to copy and paste this code into my page. And this is code. We don't paste it in like a new post. We don't paste it into the top navigation bar. We paste it in via code. So I'm going to show you one of the best ways to do it in WordPress. And then for, for you, as a, if you're not using WordPress so that you're not wasting your time, what I would recommend is do a search for Add Google Analytics and Analytics to Weebly, for example whatever yours is. So check that out for a moment. If you're not using WordPress, I'm going to show every one of us that are using WordPress what I would do. Go over to your WordPress site.
you're in your WordPress site, and for some of you that we did the Bing Analytics, um, I had mentioned that there was a, a plugin, and I'll talk more about plugins later. There's a plugin that added this extra SEO feature. And then we were able to add the, the Bing uh, code. We need something similar to that for Google Analytics. Um, so if you've got WordPress, um, how many of you see a, a, an item that says analytics and it has a little icon that looks like a little wrench? Anyone see that? If you don't, let's add it. We're going to add a new plugin. It's free. So on the left side under plugins, hover over plugins, select add new. If you, if you don't see plugins, you probably have a WordPress.com site, and they don't allow you to do that. So I'll check yours in, uh, in a moment. And so you're going to go to plugins and add new plugin. At the top right, you'll see search. So we'll search for Y O A S T, Yoast Google Analytics. Yoast is the name of a famous plugin developer with in WordPress they develop a lot of great free and paid plugins that will really improve your site your WordPress site Yoast and so one of them that they offer is the Google Analytics plugin which does what we need it to do basically put that code into our site so type it and press enter that should then show you bunch of results, but the one we care about is Google Analytics by Yoast. It looks like that. It's, it's blue. It's got the little chart, and it's by Team Yoast. If it's not by Team Yoast, it's not the right one. It has over 1 million active installs. Four, by, four out of five stars, 307 reviews, updated two months ago. <coughs> You want to click the button, mine says update, but you want to click the button that says install. You're going to install it. You're going to get some feedback that says downloading and extracting, whatever. And then it's going to say activate. Can't quite show it to you, but it's going to have a button that says activate. Click on activate. And once you've activated it, now do you see a menu item on the left that says Analytics? All right, so if you do see that, <clears throat> Analytics, Yoast Analytics, go to Settings. Mine's already done, but you will see then a button that says Authenticate with your Google account you will see that button. You want to click on it. What pops up is saying, do you want to connect Google Analytics with your website? So we'll click Accept. And then on the next screen, it'll say, OK, take this code and put it into this box in your website. Click Save Authentication. After you save authentication, it should take you back here, and again, mine looks a little different, but yours then should say, uh, I believe it should say UA profile and a box for you to pick, click it, and then click, click the item that you called main website. I believe it should say main website, or if not, it should say all website data, one of those two options. Select it, and then at the bottom, click save. So it's a little different, but it's a few steps. This is how we verify the Google Analytics to your site if it's a WordPress site. It's going to be different steps if you've got a different kind of site. So we don't actually take that code? And send it if we're doing it the way with a WordPress site, this is all we need. But if you've got a Weebly site, most likely you will have to copy that code. And however it is on Weebly that you edit your code, you copy and paste it in there. Or Wix, or the, or the um, uh, GoDaddy site builder, and so forth. Everyone's a little different. In my perfect world, everyone that comes to these classes, everyone's using WordPress. 
and then I can show everyone exactly the same thing. But that doesn't always happen, so I'm happy to help you individually to get that working. Question? Need a little help? Okay, I'll do the helping in just one moment. In general, this is what you need to do with Google Analytics. Uh, this is how you verify the site. And what this is doing, this, these lines of code here are just tracking so much data about the people visiting your site. And again, we want it to start tracking it as soon as possible because this won't go back in time to show you what happened a month ago. For example, this client that we set up recently, look at their chart right here. It's not tracking it until we set it up. So that's why you do want to set this up. I'm going to go into detail about the different screens and what does a bounce rate mean and what does this data mean and what do I do with it. I'm going to go into detail next time. Today we wanted to spend time on some of the concepts about the marketing strategy, answering a few questions about why. I wanted to start to talk about setting these things up. It's individualized. Everyone's got slightly different uh, needs, and so that's why a lot of what today was about individual help. I'm going to end the main lecture in just a moment, and then I'll help you individually for the last half hour. We did this one together. You try, on your own, to do the Google Analytics, uh, the Google Webmaster, google.com slash webmasters. If you manage to do Bing, you'll be able to do this one too. If you manage to do Google Analytics, you should be able to do this one as well. Those are the three webmaster tools that we need to set up to know all of the data about our site, to be able to deal with it. Knowledge is power. So I'll take general questions, and then we'll do the lab time. Yes? Okay. Anyone else? General questions, yes. Are you going to be going into more about keywords next time? Yes. Uh, once we've got these webmaster tools set up, and we'll be able to then tell, uh, see effectively, are these keywords working? So when we come back next time, these keywords that we developed on day one, I'll talk about adding them to the site, where to add them, other techniques and tips, another handout, and so forth. So we'll, we'll get to it. Now, I do have to say, unfortunately, usually this class is four weeks long. For whatever reason, it's three weeks. So I am going to have to cut out a thing here or there. Um, the class will be offered again. You're free to take the class again next time or skip day one, two, and three and come to day four. You're free to do that. But usually it's four weeks long and it really works better with four weeks. We'll be able to do as much as we can in three weeks. Any other general questions? Yes. Is it real-time data? It is. Google Analytics can tell us exactly how many people are visiting our site at this moment. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we can look at it during the lab time. Any other general questions? All right, so we'll wrap up the main lecture at this point. We will learn some more next time.